Okay, now I will show some features that have been implemented with YOLT 2.1. Among them, I will show the configuration features. I will open a, a simple specification. And in this specification, we can see that there is a difference between certain tasks that have a, a thin border and certain other tasks that have a thicker border. Well, the difference is that these tasks marked with a thicker border are actually configurable. What does it mean? It means that I can decide to block the input or the output ports of this task. For example, if I block the input port, port of this task, it means that I will not send control to this task. So as long as I reach this condition, then I cannot go through this path. If I block the output port of a task, essentially it's splitting uh, behavior, then I will not be able to proceed after I've reached the task. So I can set the input and output port configuration of a configurable task by means of these two menus. For example, here I can see that there is an input port towards these two places, this and that place. If I take a more complex example, I can actually show you the differences between the various types of inputs and output ports. Let's consider, the, let's consider this output port. That's an end split. So in any, in, uh, whenever you have an end split, then you consider only one output port, because essentially that's capturing the end splitting behavior, where you send a token to all outgoing R of that task. So if I right click on this and I try to configure this output port, I will see that there is only one output port which is towards two tar target nodes, P1, condition P1, and task arrange travel insurance. Different is the situation for uh, uh, an XOR split output port, for which we have actually an output port for all outgoing guards of this XOR split. Like in this case, for task submit travel form for approval, if I go to the output port configuration, I see that I'll have three output ports, one towards task request for change, the other towards task reject travel up form, and the third towards task approve travel form up. So essentially what I can do is that I can block specific ports to deny control to the outgoing tasks that are mapped with them. A similar case, a similar behavior, is the one of the input fork for an XOR split, where essentially I have one input fork for each, for each of its incoming arcs. So for example here I have one input port from the tau arc, and one input port from the check and update trunk fork. Then for the OR split, I have one, input port, uh, one output port for each combination of its outgoing arcs while the OR join is treated like an end join. So we only have one uh, input port for the OR join. So essentially these input and output ports allow a user to disable certain parts of a net. So to simplify the behavior of this process. So we can imagine a configurable process model as a reference model for a specific domain. For example, this could be seen as a reference model for travel form applications. So whenever I have to launch a travel request application, I may have certain options that I have to decide upon. For example, whether or not I want to allow the secretary to also help me prepare this form, or if I want to arrange a travel insurance, or if I want to uh, enable applicants to also make changes, and so on. So in, that case, in this case, then I can use the reference model as a starting point and then I can apply my configuration, check the correctness of the configuration, and if I happy, I'm happy with the result, I can commit the configuration. In fact, as I start removing branches, it is possible that the resulting model may no longer be sound, may no longer be correct, both from a syntactical point of view and a semantical point of view. From a syntactical point of view, for example, I may leave the model disconnected or with dangling arcs while from a semantical point of view, the model may not be behaviorally correct. 
we may have created dead logs or live logs depending on which branches we remove, which fragments of the process we remove when we do configuration. So in order to prevent users from creating configurations that would not be feasible in reality because they contain errors, we have implemented these features in the editor check configuration correctness. So the check configuration uh, correctness features allow us to prevent users from making configuration choices that will lead to incorrect configuration. For example, if I want to configure the input port of this task request for change and I decide to block that, then the system tells me that the output, output port of submit travel form for approval uh, towards request for change has actually also been blocked in order to keep the model sound for any of its possible configurations. So if I now control check this task and check its output port, I see that one of its output port, actually the one towards task request for change, has actually been blocked. What does it mean? It means that indeed there is a hidden condition between these two tasks. So if I block the input port of request for change, then it will still be possible to send a token to this hidden condition from submit travel form for, a, for approval and that will be a dangling condition that is a condition that is disconnected from the rest of the model it's no longer on a path from, a, from the start to the end condition so in order to prevent such operations I also need to block this port clearly I can also do the reverse operation if I activate this port then also the input port of task request for change we will be again enabled. When I configure a task, I can also preview what's going to disappear from the model before committing the configuration. For example, I, from a range travel insurance, that's an XOR script, I can configure its input port by deciding that I no longer want to receive control from task prepare travel for secretary. So I block it. Clearly now, also the input port of this task, prepare travel form secretary, has been blocked in order not to even send control to this task, so to avoid the problem that I mentioned before. So now I can preview the configuration and I will see that some elements have been grayed out, essentially the path going to prepare travel form for approval. So when I start, now I can only start from prepare travel form employee. This place, this condition has remained in place because I can still send control to this condition by means of task request for change. Then I may decide that I don't want to allow users to try again to revise their application, so essentially I want to block this task. So I can go to its input port and block that. And then if I do the preview, I will see that now this whole part of the net has actually disappeared. Once I map it with a configuration, I can commit that and I will derive an individualized model where some branches have been removed as a result of being excluded through configuration and also the splitting and joining behavior of the remaining task has been uh, uh, fixed in order to be aligned with the resulting model. For example, here we no longer have an exhaust Now I will quickly show you how this um, the power of this correctness checking through another simple case study. So this is a very simple net, which is indeed a particular type of net, because this is an asymmetric choice net. It's a net where essentially, when we get, uh, we have two conditions, this and that, which share something in their post set, in this case task C. However, the post set of one condition, like BC, is not contained in the post set of the other condition, like CE and vice versa. So this is an asymmetric choice. In fact, as a token gets into this and that place, if task E is executed, I no longer have a choice between task B and task C. So the only option that I have is to execute task B. Now, I will show you that if I try, if I start, if I launch the check configuration correctness, and then I try to block task B, clearly this model will no longer be sound. Because if I don't have task B, then I may create a deadlock. 
if a runtime task e exe is executed before executing task C, so task C can no longer receive control. And then, essentially, F will be a dead task because it can no longer be executed. So if I try to block task B, I will see that since I have uh, I see if I try to block task C, I will see that since I have first enabled the correctness uh, configuration check, I can no longer block its input port nor block its output port. So essentially this task is no longer configurable because in this model if I try to configure this task, any configuration will be unsound. 